little bitty baby bunny. The dogs ain't spotted him yet. chicken wire around it so if something spooks them they're covered from the top and then when something spooks them they'll drop down when they drop down this is when they get spooked and they start running against the cages and the wire and these holes are big enough that raccoons or any kind of possums or any kind of critter can reach in and grab them and put, try to pull them to the cage and I'll put chicken wire on the bottom so they can't reach through the bottom when they jump off the roost when they get spooked and I'll show you step by step how to build it real quick. All right, All right, I usually do is measure the top length bars on the back and the front side. So I usually do is I try to hook one of the wires when I'm doing it by myself and go all the way and butt this other bar. So I got about 10 foot one on the front side. Now I'll check the back. I have about 10 foot half inch. So I'm gonna split the difference between those both and go 10 foot three quarters on both sides. Okay, I got these two and a half inch self-tapping screws. What I usually do is get one I usually try to find center on it what about here and I usually <laughs> drill it in there right till you feel a bump on the back side go for the second one do the same I need to try to go about an inch down because I just don't want this wood too hot, high above the t um, metal bar. I want it kind of flush. All this is pressure treated wood. And this ball panel is 10 by 10 by 6 foot tall. They're perfect for chickens. In the space that they need. You want to grab the top and the, of wood and the bar itself and kind of press them together. Sometimes you miss, like that one did, but you just tap it up, line it up again, and she's in there. Line it up, she needs to go up a little bit, right about there. She sunk in there pretty good. And this will make your structure for the top when you need to put your pin in place. Just like so. And I'll put one more over here on the side in the middle. Like so. And that can actually hold me up. So we're good on that one. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, and then I'll show you what I do in the center. All right. See, I got these side boards up. I tapped them in really good. They're strong. It's not going anywhere. That's gonna be your support for your roof. And what I'm gonna do is measure this out, find the center mark. Nikki's already marked the center mark on this piece right now. It's right there. Go to this side. Do the same thing. Hook this side. There's our center mark. Get our square. Mark it here. Mark it on the top and mark a little scratch on the back so you can see. Because I have gold screws that are three inches that are just for wood. And it's going ahead. It's going ahead to miss this bar. And we're going to 
gonna go straight through the wood into the other wood there so I can screw the roof down in the center. And what I do is try to make them a little stronger. I try to tie them all together. So just put your drill right there. Just tie them in a little bit. I usually try to do two on them. So if it does, a side does go down, I'll know before it collapses. All right, that's done. Let's go around and put two screws in. And I'm going to show you what I do in the center. I showed you the X marks. And now, put one side in first, and the other side. And I kind of do it kind of a little higher than it's supposed to be. As you can see on these right here, when you drill this board to this pipe, you're never going to get it square. Just screw a couple on the side and just screw it on the side and on the inside. And go to the back as well. I made this pencil mark on the back side and it'll tell me right where I need to aim to put the screws at. There's one, and there's two, and she's locked in. And I get these inch and a half roof tapping screws, and they have the washer, rubber washers on them. I usually get them by the box. They have them by the bags, but these boxes are a little cheaper for more of them. And I go along, try to line up the first piece of tin. The same spot. And just go along it where you put the wood. As you can see, my wood's a little higher than the, the metal bar on this because I got an inch or so on it. Just go along that and screw her down. And this will make your. Uh, pan waterproof and snow whatever other stuff that will be harmful for your boat and then I get a ladder and I go in the in the middle because I gotta screw down the middle as well because I put that center piece of wood there and I got my little step ladder right here no, nothing not big. It's enough to stand up on. These rubber tapping <laughs> ten screws on it, and you're good to go. And then I'll go with the next piece on top of that piece and keep running her, and I'll show you afterwards. Okay. Now I got the first piece of tin on. I usually do the second one and tie them both together. And then I usually do one by itself and leave this one out and put the other sheet on and then tie them both together. As you can see I did those right there. got her. Last piece, I do it from the outside because obviously I can't come from the inside. <laughs> what? It worked out perfectly. Five pieces of tin for a 10 by 10 dog kennel. You can kind of feel for them too. You know exactly where they're at. 
Drill them in. It's perfect with the rubber wa the rubber washers. So it keeps it from leaking. I kind of leave a little bit of shed roof right here in case it rains and the rain won't blow in on them or the snow won't blow in on them too much. So it's already going to do it from the sides because I don't overlap it from the sides too much. This roof right here is guaranteed for life. That's what I like about it. There's no going back and doing it again or... Sometimes in the winter time I just get a broom and brush it off a little bit if you need to. If you get a lot of snow and you live up north or something like that, you can put another cross brace going across to hold the center up or even a little post going down to hold it up even stronger. But other than that, it's done right there. And I'll show you what I do. I'm going to put the door on here. I'm going to put the chicken wire around it and I'll show you when I'm done. Alright, so we got the door on. Frankie's finishing up the wire. I got a smaller roll of the chicken wire. Uh, this stuff right here, it was about 25 feet and um, I meant to use it for a different project and we ended up using something else. So for this, the 25 feet was obviously not enough. And it ends right here. So we still got almost half a cage to go but we ended up finding some extra wire that we just had laying around it's not as bright as the other one but it's still chicken wire and it'll still work basically all it is is to keep stuff from reaching in and the chickens to keep from reaching their heads out um, and then we just tied it all the way around there's a few little extra wire clips on the top and the bottom and some in the center. That way it's completely impenetrable. Well, almost impenetrable. And on this, as you can see, I ran it past where the door opens is where I cut it. And just leave it connected over here as one full piece. So we started right here I wrapped her all the way around. Yeah. And it works perfectly and I usually Use a small doghouse for their starters. For new chicks. For new chicks. We'll and put some shavings in there. Yep. And then later on when they get a little older, I'll put a roost up and they'll start roosting and they'll take the doghouse away. Alright, thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe. And this is how you build a chicken coop. Fast and easy. And it lasts a very, very long time. And it's sometimes, if you're strong enough like I am, I can move it. I just go from one side to the other side and move it on fresh grass and keep them healthy and fresh.